Hello, I'm Jose Mendez, a teaching artist at the Norton Museum of Art. Today, you will be creating some art inspired by Dale Chihuly's Persian Sea Life, part of the Norton Museum's collection. You'll be creating sea creatures like the starfish. As you can see, they have different textures and colors. I will give you some tips on how to create your own at home. The materials that you're going to need for this activity is air dry clay, the acrylics that inspire you when you look at the Persian Sea Life. I chose orange, blue, and green. The type of acrylics don't matter. You, it's your choice. You're going to need some brushes. And last but not least, toothpicks. I'll go over the video while you So you start off by grabbing some clay, just the right amount that fits in the palm of your hand. When you work with clay, it takes a lot of pulling, pinching, and kneading. And you want to knead your clay with both hands to get a soft texture. Once I kneaded my clay, I will place my clay between both hands remember don't apply too much pressure you want to apply just the small amount of pressure so you can get a round ball if you apply too much pressure it might come out a little flatter so now that you have a round ball you're going to start creating the arms and most starfish have five arms uh, there are different types of starfish that have multiple amount of more arms uh, I've heard and I've read that they can get up to 40 arms. But we're gonna go with the what we mostly see the five arms. So you go in a pinch five points and try to keep it even. You're gonna pinch and pull, pinch and pull each five points to where you want to create. Whether if it's whether your arm is thicker. You don't have to pinch and pull too much. If the arm is a little bit longer and slimmer, you might have to pull a little longer. And this is where the toothpicks come in handy. You're gonna take a toothpick, place it at the tip of the arm, push it in to the center of the starfish. And it might be pointing for you so it might stick you so you want to grab a brush to push it in and you want to cover it with clay so you can't see your toothpick this will help keep your clay in place once it dries because clay can become brittle once it dries especially if you have thin arms if you want the top of your starfish to have a tip, you can also push and pull the top of your starfish. If you take a look at the texture in some of these starfish, you are, and you want to create the little holes, now's the time that you want to grab your toothpick and you are going to begin to poke your clay. Don't go too deep. Poke it lightly and you'll see how much you need to poke your clay. If you take a look at my sample, I didn't cover it too well. I didn't cover the toothpick too well. You can see it at the end. But you're gonna do a better job than me. And if you look at the starfish, it also has little dots. Uh, if you look at the previous starfish that I showed you, it has uh, little balls. Now, where you're going to grab a very small amount of clay that fits between three of your fingers and use your fingers to create a small little ball. Now, if you are trying to create the balls that go on top of the starfish, then you're just slightly gonna apply pressure gently. And now, if you're trying to make it more of a flatter circle, um, you're gonna press a little harder. And this is how you get your texture for your starfish. 
Chihuly was inspired by taking a weaving class. He took his first weaving class and that inspired him to become a glass blower. Chihuly is quite unique because he works with a team of artists to create these large installations around the world. Now I want you to keep in mind that we've been working with fresh clay and it's nice and moist and the texture is very soft. Now if you look at the Nautilus I created based on what inspired me off Chihuly's collection at the museum, I created a Nautilus. Now if you look at this Nautilus, it's nice and dry and it's more of a gray tone. If you look at the clay that's not dry, it has a tan tone. Now keep in mind that you want your clay to dry overnight so it is fully dry and then you can paint it. And the Nautilus took me two days because it's a little thicker than most of the starfish. So the thicker your clay is, the longer you have to wait. But if it's a smaller sculpture that you're creating, it is, it, one day is enough. And we are, it is pretty warm in Florida, so it's based on the temperatures around. On the starfishes that you see in the Nautilus, I applied a couple coats. You want to apply your first coat, let it dry for maybe 10 minutes, and then apply your second coat. If you still have uh, coverage issues, then apply that third coat. Persian Sea Life in the Norton Museum is in the ceiling. So when you walk by, you see these bright colors and light is going through it, and along with the colors, you see different sea creatures. And as we, uh, we have tours at the museum by grade school children. And uh, many times when they have, part of the tour was the Chihuly. I asked them, um, what is your favorite part of the tour? And they will say the ceiling, the bright ceiling with different sea creatures. So once your clay is drying, you've painted, I encourage you to grab your sea creatures. And if you have any furniture that is glass and you can see through, I encourage you to create your own installation. Thank you very much for joining me today, and I hope we were able to inspire you.